Imagine going to the mall or a store with your friends. You and your friends are walking around and you instinctively, you automatically go into your favorite store. You walk straight to your favorite section and you peruse. You're looking around for some new clothes. You're flipping through outfits. Hangers are flying. I saw that one. That one's not my size. I don't like the way this looks. If they had this outfit in a different color, I would buy it. Now you're going through finding clothes that you like and you become incredibly focused. You're on a mission and you want to find something new. You're searching for that outfit that says, this is me. Style is expression. And clothes are a fantastic way to express yourself. Half a day. This is Tori Manley speaking on Fenatsu. For this episode on the environment and us, I want to focus on sustainability in the fashion industry. Pew, 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 pew. Revolution. April is Fashion Revolution Month. The month of April holds many different awareness days, such as Autism Awareness Month, National Minority Health Month, Sexual Assault and Family Violence Awareness Month. They're also connected to the fashion industry, how we treat each other, the resources we use, and how we as individuals have a relationship with the earth. It is perfectly acceptable, encouraged even, to feel safe to feel safe wherever you go. It is acceptable to work where you want to work. We want you to feel like you can take up space where you feel welcomed and included. And I say this to you because I want to introduce you to a document. The document is called the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. This document has 30 articles or 30 points describing rights of all people or humans, humans. The document was created by several different governments, societies, and cultures. And this document is, as it should be, the inspiration that all societies should follow for sustainable development. My message to you is that creating thoughtfulness and being curious makes you knowledgeable. I invite you to remember this. The world we see today has been created by ideas and I invite you to be curious and invite ideas into your brain so that sustainability doesn't look one way. Sustainability is not a one size fits all. It looks like you doing your best with the information that you have. Sustainability goes beyond changing our habits. Sustainability is also inviting us to think of others and to follow our natural instincts. Our natural instinct is to care for one another and to help others in need, to give back when you have the capacity, the ability to give back. Sustainability is creating something beautiful and it is completely human to want to feel and to want to look beautiful or handsome or stunning. It's important for you to wear clothes that make you feel comfortable. We're going to hear the stories of a garment worker, someone who makes clothes. My name is Shuma Sarkar. I'm a garment factory worker. I have a son and I'm a widow. My husband died in a garment factory fire. In my family, We are three sisters and one brother, and my mother and father living together. I work on trousers or pants in the garment factory. Primark, Tesco, and Sears are some of our buyers. In the factory I work in, the conditions are very poor. The bathrooms are unclean. The drinking water is bad. The pressure of production is so high that workers are unable to drink water. Not being able to drink water causes a lot of the workers to fall ill. Some girls get jaundice, kidney problems, and other illnesses. 
Some parts of the factory have too much light, whereas other parts don't get enough light, and this affects the eyes of many workers. The noise level in the factory is so high that it causes a lot of workers to suffer hearing problems. The inside of the factory is extremely hot and the windows are small, allowing no air ventilation. The suffocating heat also causes a lot of the workers to fall sick. Many of the materials used in the factory contain eight harsh and toxic chemicals, which cause many workers to suffer from skin problems, especially on the hands. All salary I receive. I'm unable to afford decent housing. I'm forced to live in a slum, which is extremely unhygienic and causes many problems. With the salary in which I live, it is not possible to change housing. Only if my salary is increased, I can move with my family to a decent house and live with them. I joined the trade union because it's one of my rights and I also wanted to learn about the rights I'm entitled to. Because the factory conditions are so poor, I wanted to know more about my own rights as a worker and what should be done about these conditions. From Sarkar in 2009. And now we'll go on. The fashion revolution is for sustainability as well as worker rights. Let's dive into this story. In 2013, 12 years ago, a garment factory in Dhaka, Bangladesh collapsed, killing more than 1,100 workers and injuring many more. This was the deadliest disaster in history of clothing manufacturing industry. The Rania Plaza building was known to have been built with substandard materials under faulty conditions Yet, the factory remained very active until the deadly collapse. An investigation into the building after the collapse found that the mayor of the city wrongly granted approval for construction and allowed the owner to disregard construction codes, illegally constructed the upper floors of the building to house factories with several thousand workers and large power generators that shook the building anytime it switched on. The day before the collapse, large cracks appeared in the building and an engineer who was called to inspect the building determined it was unsafe. Rania and the factory owners, however, ordered the workers to return the next morning. When the generators were switched on that day, the entire building collapsed. Murder charges were brought against Rania and 37 others who were held responsible for the disaster. This was not the first deadly disaster in a garment factory in Bangladesh. But the scale, the scale of Rania Plaza collapse brought greater global attention to the unsafe working conditions of many workers in the garment industry. The collapse also raised concerns over the responsibility of American and European companies and governments who employ labor in Bangladesh and other low wage markets around the world. In effort to drive down prices for consumers, companies often drive down manufacturing costs. Bangladesh is home to more than 5,000 garment factories, manufacturing clothes for most of the top brands around the world. Garment workers in Bangladesh are among the lowest paid in the world. Companies that manufacture goods at Rania Plaza include Walmart, The Gap, Adidas, and dozens more. These companies faced growing pressure to take action in the wake of the collapse. Some companies donated money to relief efforts, but many activist groups saw these measures as inadequate. Lanaya Foxvog of the International Labor Rights Forum stated, what's important is the victims receive the full amount they are owed. Kurt Cavano, vice chairman of supply chain of logistics 
and GT Nexus said, from what I've seen, Tazreen and Rania were wake up calls. Chasing that last nickel of costs had to be done in a way that doesn't put your business at risk. Yet many in the Bangladesh garment industry feared that holding international companies and governments accountable could put them at further financial risk should the companies choose to pull their business out of the country. Aleya Akhtar, union leader and secretary general of the Bangladesh Garment and Industry Workers Federation noted, there are about 4 million garment workers. It is impossible for them to get work anywhere else because this is what they're skilled to do. Not only are we asking for compensation for the brands, we are also asking them, do not walk away from us. Do not walk away from Bangladesh. Whew. Those were some two very heavy stories, and I thank you for your listening ears. So I have a call to action for you. My call to action is for you to look at the labels on your clothes or on family members' clothes. It should be either on the back or at the side, on the left or the right of your shirt, more than likely the left, I think. Read the tag. Where is it made from? Made in, maybe it's China, Vietnam, Bangladesh, or India. Those are the five countries that are most commonly exploiting workers. China, Vietnam, Bangladesh, or India. And sometimes even the Philippines. You may take note of it, you can tally, but just keep in mind as you're looking through these tags, where are these garments or clothes being made from. You could also look at the material, the material in which the clothing is made out of. Is it made out of polyester, nylon, or acrylic? These are all plastic-based fibers. They are as plastic as a King Car bottle. I also encourage you to check out a website called Good On You ECO. That is Good On You ECO, and that teaches you more about fast fashion and the sustainable, the unsustainability of the industry. And for our next episode, we'll go over the environmental issues on fast fashion and what they have on our planet. And always remember that your individual impact matters. We can be more when we know more and being stylish and Fabulous is a way to express yourself, a way for you to be more of yourself. We can become more of ourselves as individuals rather than having more. We can grow a deeper consciousness, a thought process about the fast fashion industry. Our knowledge that we gain will help us create a more sustainable and peaceful world. I'm hopeful about the huge difference our individual actions can make. And I hope you are too. I hope you know that your actions can change the world. Esther.